So, Ann Tate, shall we talk about Iron Road? I'll say I love talking about it. <laughs> I love hearing about it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, besides, well, when I when I first began my career, I thought that I would work in the book business. And now it's so much later that I have finally come to do exactly what I planned years and years ago and got seduced by movies. <laughs> because, you know, I am the producer of this groundbreaking movie, which is a co-production, a very rare thing, between China and Canada. And that's another story of how hard that is. But this film has been shown around the world it's it's translated into italian and spanish and finnish and a lot of other languages it's been broadcast three times on cbc and i think you've mentioned or i'll mention that it's available now on cbc gem and i think you're going to put a link up aren't you Crystal? i am going to and i'm going to put a link down below in the description box and i will add that i watched it on gem and it's a fantastic movie and book right. too because i've read the book and watched the movie oh uh, you're a darling girl so this movie is about a poor chinese woman in the 1880s, named Li June. The title of the book is Li June and the Iron Road. And she has to, for a number of reasons that I'll amplify, she has to disguise herself as a guy. And she's nicknamed Little Tiger for her feistiness and, and because she's very short. So she or he comes to Canada searching for her long lost father who uh, says he's going up to work in Canada and she gets a job setting explosives on the sheer cliffs of the so-called impassable Rocky Mountains. That's the most dangerous part of the railroad that connected the east and the west of Canada and held our country together when it threatened to fall apart. Now, Little Tiger, or Li Jun, falls in love with her absolute opposite, the rich white son of a railroad boss, who, of course, thinks that she's a boy, mm -hmm. admires her courage, and takes him, Little Tiger, on as a buddy. So eventually, Li Jun has to decide whether to reveal her real identity. She does. And he falls in love with her and dreams of an ideal match between them. And I think I'll let you read the book to see what happens at the end. Yes. Yes, indeed. And it's a good ending. Thank you. We wrestled with that. Yeah. Yes, yes, I bet you did. Um, so viewers, you don't know what we're talking about. You really do have to read it <laughs> to find out. <laughs> so Anne, I mean, great story. Where did this idea for this for this concept come together for you? Or how? Well, um, I knew nothing about the railroad <laughs> when I went to and this building, I mean, I traveled with my family when I was a teenager and experienced that going across to the Rockies or through the Rockies. Um, but I, went, I love opera and I went to an opera workshop uh, by Tapestry, uh, which does original work. And this was the, it, that inspired me. Um, it was the germ of this idea. It had the, uh, cross-racial romance mm. but it it didn't have the same um plot really and um the the father um the long lost father was more important than the love story i felt so but i thought ah that would make a great movie and so I optioned it. And when you option a movie, you have the right to change it 
you would consult, of course, with the original writer. And um, the original writer had no background in writing for movies, so he completely agreed that we would hire a another writer for the, the film. Um, I was so impressed that there were thousands of Chinese workers who uh, uh, did the, the really shitty work. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they did the tough work. And um, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to tell the world this story. And I finally uh, went to the CBC and they said, well, you're not Chinese, you know. And I convinced them that no one else was making it. So they better trust me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such an important story. I mean, given today's climate with the anti-Asian hate, uh, I, I just, we, we don't know the story of how so many Chinese died and have lived. Three, literally, Crystal, three of them died for every mile of track that they laid. Yeah. Think of that just building a railroad and three people die for every mile of it. It's incredible. Yeah, it is we are. Incredible. It, it, is. It, it truly is. Uh, we're experiencing those hate crimes here in Toronto and in Vancouver. Remember the Chinese guy that was thrown out of his wheelchair on video. Oh. And then there were two others Chinese assaulted. It, it's really because in people's mind, they say, oh, COVID began in Wuhan, and we hate that. Go back home. And if they could only know that it was the Chinese that actually built the crucial section of the railroad that held our country together, they'd have a whole different attitude. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So... Yeah. <laughs> after after producing the movie you know that i wrote the novel based on it afterwards which is unusual and i had a writing partner that you know yes and i'm always so intrigued and when two creatives collaborate what was it like for you and paulette to um Paulette Bourgeois. With Paulette Bourgeois to, people to work will, together. People will, I hope, know Paulette Bourgeois. She wrote 30 books in the uh, youth uh, series called Franklin the Turtle, and they've sold yes. millions of copies worldwide. But she wanted to work on a, an adult book. Mm -hmm. And she, I, I don't think anyone could be as good to work with as Paulette was. And we, we would um, assign each other different. No, of course, we had the, the movie story yeah. and dialogue when we wanted to use it. But our novel is very different. And Paulette and I, particularly her, she, uh, I should say, watch your grammar, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> she did a lot of research into 1880s China, mm. and uh, we consulted with a number of people, including Paul Yi, whom your viewers may uh, know, wonderful writer. And um, I asked a lot of people who, whose um, relative, but there's one who her grandfather and one whose own father worked on the railroad. So we did a, a hell of a lot of research. Um, but she was a joy to work with. We, we would, yeah, well, um, the computer is marvelous because you send what you're doing. And then we corrected and revised. And you know, there's such a thing as the first, what do they call it? The advanced reading copy. And there is my advanced reading yeah. copy with a rather dark version of the, uh, 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 the cover and a lot of changes all the way through. So it takes not just with each other, but even when the first printing is done, there's mm -hmm. things you want to change. 
Yeah, and I think, Anne, I think that's what's so interested for many writers. Like, it's always a dream. It's like, oh, you know, for our books to be made into movies, <laughs> where for you, where for you, it was like the opposite yeah. process. I did it backwards. I, but the fact is that many, many novels do become hit movies. And as you say, a writer dreams of having that happen. In fact, um, I, I was reading that one of the reasons for the success of the streamer Apple TV Plus is that so many of their books do come from, uh, their shows do come from books. And look at um, the stats that so many adaptations are really the gain the bigger audience well look at the handmaid's tale yes 47 episodes many shooting right here in canada and near toronto from margaret atwood's novel and um well uh, we were talking about um, the film festival sarah polly has adapted marion tabe's novel yeah. women talking uh, into a really successful movie. It's going to be up for an Oscar. And her her film, um, Away From Her, yes. Sarah adapted that from an Alice Munro story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm going to say something um, controversial. Remember the Canadian filmmaker, it, wonderful, much admired filmmaker Norman Jewison, when he said, quote, film is the literature of this generation. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you, Crystal, are movies really our literature? What do you think? Oh, my gosh, you're making me think here on, a, on a, <laughs> in the just, early morning. Yeah, throwing it at you. Well, maybe we could just run through what the difference is between yeah. a book and a movie hmm? yeah i i would love that because you know i'm an avid reader but i also yes really, you are really love films um and one of the things because i i i watched the film first because <gasps> your book of course was a film first and then i right. read your book and it, you know what i'd have to say it is a very different experience because when you're reading that book it's like a movie in your head and that's your own mind Yes. yes, you make the pictures, right? Yes. And yes. for me, that's what I love about reading. So it's ah, uh -huh. very different yeah. to read with the movie in my head this time. Oh, right. Because the big difference between a book and a movie, it's very simple. Books tell their stories through words mm -hmm. and movies tell their stories through pictures. Yeah. But when, and so when it comes to expressing emo, inner thoughts and feelings, it, there's a, a, a cornball way to do that in the movies with a voiceover. But generally, the movies rely on a big close up of the character that we then empathize with. And we think we know what the character is thinking because of what we've seen in the images before, but in, um, and, and look, you can see um, how I'll show you the, the poster of the movie is a big wide shot, mm -hmm. uh, an action um, still. And then the, well, you've shown already the, the poster is the big close up. Yeah. And that's sort of, says the, the difference right there yeah so, I mean, that's interesting Anne, because i'd never really thought about it in that uh -huh. way before uh -huh. yeah well let me uh, mention the difference um the way the movie starts and the way the novel starts yes please you do remember the move the movie starts with this wide shot of the train spewing huge cloud of steam racing along the track and then we see the tough railroad tycoon in front of a vast valley explaining i'm going to push a railroad through that valley 
and and this wilderness if it kills me and every man under me now the novel starts completely differently the right the reader in and i'm going to read this tiny bit yes if i may of the course. reader is right beside Li Jun as she wakes up in the household of her Chinese master, Mr. Ho. Here's what we wrote. The rooster in Mr. Ho's car courtyard crowed loudly to greet the dawn as Li Jun stretched and yawned, warm by the first rays of sun, streaming through the tiny window in her servants' quarters. What a glorious day, she thought. Then she heard first wife screeching like a cat in a sack, calling out, lazy girl, come here. My chamber pot is full and the stink is making me green. Oh, coming mistress, said Li Jun, and I will bring you your breakfast. So, you know, that's not in the movie at all. And you're no. right there with her. It establishes her life before she became, before she had to disguise herself. And it's so completely different. And then um, there was a big challenge. We wanted to tell her backstory. But in the novel, we could tell it so much easier. It's so easy in the novel. You can make a time shift with the simple phrase like she remembered and immediately you're back years ago. Can I make an instance of that? Yep. Here's something. More than ever, Lee June wished she was at home. Mm -hmm. She would never forget the day her world changed forever. It was her 12th birthday and she and her mother got a letter from her father out in gold mountain the new world along with most of his wages from the past months he wrote that the gold rush in um, america was over so he had to travel north to british columbia the new gold mountain to find work. Now, many people in British Columbia, he wrote, wanted to join the United States, join America. Um, but the first prime minister of Canada promised them an iron road, a railroad that would link the vast nation from sea to sea. Now, how do you do that in a movie? Yeah. To <laughs> tell that. Yeah. Uh, part of history it, it it would take a whole movie to do it mm -hmm. so that transmits the father's story and some of our history um through that little remembrance of the letter wow it's it's so interesting the the differences yeah. isn't, isn't it, it? Yeah. yeah i i think so i certainly had to learn it um the hard way by, yeah. um, you know, I'm a playwright too, and I have had to learn to write screenplays through images mainly. And um, I had to learn to write the novel in a very different way than the movie. Yeah, and so Anne, out of all, I mean, you, you, you do so many different angles. So what would you, what would you find in the creative process? Which would be more challenging, like the screenwriting, the book? What, well, which... Books have some big advantages, you know? Yeah, yeah. You can move back and forth between centuries and you don't have to spend any money doing it. <laughs> There's no budget restrictions. Readers, just like you said, readers create their own sets through their imagining what the writer's words on the page describing yeah. you can go anywhere yeah. in time and place and and you don't have to worry that in a film budget add another 35 percent if it's going to be historical oh really yeah yeah wow. oh there's another thing that's fun for <laughs> um that uh, oh and you know that in this um it, in this book mm -hmm. uh, i got them to print color pictures 30 of them 
from the movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, those pictures don't do what a novel or poetry can do, which is create, met, use metaphors, comparisons, you know, that illuminate an idea or make a vivid, funny picture. Like there's a little section here where a um, little tiger is in the marketplace uh, selling fireworks. Um, and, and she sees these Victorian English women in their uh, low cut dresses. And she says, how odd that these women called themselves proper ladies and labeled the Chinese heathens when the English women displayed their breasts like melons on a fruit cart. <laughs> and I, I think that, how do you do that in a movie? You don't. <laughs> that, that's the wonderful thing for people listening who are poets. I mean, mm -hmm. the essence of poetry is metaphor. So that that's something you can't do, that you can do in a novel. <laughs> um, and, oh, well, uh, you, you can show internal thoughts. Um, uh, you can, you can't, I'm sorry, I'm saying you can't show internal thoughts in a movie, but it's so easy in a novel. And here's an yeah. example. When she first sees James, mm -hmm. the um, uh, privileged Canadian who's come to recruit for the railway, she sees him uh, trying to find directions in the market and he's utterly flummoxed. She doesn't know a word of Chinese. So she, here's what uh, I wrote um, when she first saw him. The foreigner raised his voice as if by speaking louder and gesturing harder, he would make the man understand his English. So little tiger listened carefully. His voice it sounded different from other English speakers that she'd known. Maybe this one wasn't from England at all like the others. Maybe he was from the New World, like the Mountie poster she'd been watching. And maybe he had a connection with the railway company there. And would his eyes get even bluer like the sea if she came close to him? So that tells us what her plan is. Mm -hmm. she, needs, she needs money. She mm -hmm. needs to find her long lost father. And she's already attracted to this guy. Yeah. So uh, you, you, that was, is so hard to do, except in a close up yeah. without dialogue. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. Yes. And I'm going to say on that note, everyone, with you have to have to have to read this book or watch this film because it's incredible. And I will put again links down below in the description box so you can find out where you can purchase a copy of Iron Road and also a link to CBC where you can watch it on Gem. Sorry, Anne, what did you? Oh, and you'll see how I solved the the problem put to me by the publisher saying to me, Anne, you have to write this novel from all from the point of view of the heroine. And I said, that can't be done because the climax, we know what she doesn't. So read through the page 163, I think it is. It's not a long <laughs> novel and you'll see how I solved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, so Talking with us today is award-winning film producer, screenwriter, novelist, playwright, broadcaster, and casting director, the lovely Anne Tate. Thank you so much, Anne, for being a guest on All About Canadian Books. Oh, Crystal, I've enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I hope to meet your viewers sometime. Yes, yes, me too. And I loved chatting with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my other author interviews. I post them on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the second and fourth week of every month. Thank you again.